This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. Have you ever walked into a room and felt like something or someone was there with you? Do you believe in ghosts? Is there a way to investigate unexplained experiences? You are in the right place for Indian River Hauntings presents Encounters with the Other Side. The ghost guy, Larry Lawson, is your host. With years of experience in law enforcement, he knows how to search for the truth. Stay right here as Larry and his guests from around the world discuss paranormal evidence and answer your questions about encounters with the other side. And welcome back to Encounters with the Other Side. I'm your host, Larry Lawson, otherwise known as the Ghost Guy. Returning to you for our Thanksgiving show. I'm here with my friend and engineer, Cliff Desmond. Cliff, hey. how are you doing, my friend? You ready for the holiday? Uh, well, I'm never really totally ready, but uh, I'm anticipating it anticipating. very well. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. Uh, and uh, oftentimes we, we discuss things involving the world of the paranormal and ghosts, but understand paranormal means everything, not only ghosts. UFOs. It's not just cryptos. about ghosts. That's it's right. just not about ghosts. And I'm really, really um, thrilled about um, the fact that we're going to be doing something else other than ghosts today. We're going to be talking about UFOs. Ooh. And that's pretty. I was just listening to the feed before, prior to the, uh, the show coming on, the news feed. The U.S. government again is talking about releasing more information about their look into the world of what do they call them? Uh, not an unidentified flying objects, but um, aerial phenomenon. Uh, uh, UAPs, flying. unidentified aerial phenomenon. Yeah, aerial phenomenon. Yes, that's my. Yes, that's, that's the, the new. Ter- that's more the new term that they're using now. And that's my cr- uh, guest, Rick Warner, <laughs> director of the Extraterrestrial Research Center. We're going to have him on in just a couple of seconds here. Um, Want to let you know how to listen to the show. You can hear us, of course, on WPSL 1590, the webcaster to the world. Uh, but you can also catch us if you're outside the uh, broadcast area on the WPSL website by going to WPSL.com. You can also hear us live on the TuneIn app, Google Home, as well as Alexa. Now, if you missed today's show live, you can also catch us with a video feed on YouTube in just a day or so. That's right. It'll be, uh, now you can go to YouTube and, and look for WPSL TV, but we've uh, sent uh, WPSLTV.com directly to our YouTube feed, and you can ah. find the find the Encounters playlist and binge watch. Outstanding, and that's why WPSL is known as the webcaster to the world. Mm. And folks, this is a call-in show. We'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, uh, and opinions. Give us a holler at 772 340 one five nine zero that's seven seven two three four zero one five nine zero uh want to give a couple shout outs to friends and sponsors uh, as always paradolia brewery uh on cleveland street there in sebastian florida probably in my opinion the best brewery in the state of florida of course i'm a little prejudiced but uh go see my friend pete every friday night very family friendly and pet friendly venue i might add Want to say hi to Nikki and Sherry at Doodlebug Dowsing, the organization that we buy all of our do- dowsing rods from. Uh, Ike Enzi at IDK Paranormal out of um, uh, New Mexico. They run a great uh, uh, show on the on YouTube, as well as Anibis Paranormal Research Organization. Both outfits are huge supporters of not only uh encounters with the other side but also my paranormal team the florida bureau of paranormal investigation so hi to all you folks out there upcoming events we've got a tour to friday night after thanksgiving in sebastian with indian river hauntings if you want to join us check out my website at www.indianriverhauntings.com uh, to get the information where that tour will start at 7 p.m on Friday, as well as my upcoming December schedule. I do want folks to know we're going to be back in Felsmere on December 8th with a paranormal Felsmere paranormal experience uh, that uh, the folks be able to join us. And we're going to be up in Rib City 
Rib City Restaurant for the Rib City Paranormal Experience January 8th, and that's up in the Grant area, just in Brevard County. So check it out, and you can find out all the stuff that we're doing on our website, www.indianriverhauntings.com. Also want to mention, too, folks, if you're listening and you want to get in for the drawing for a T-shirt, uh, email me at ghostguy59 at gmail.com, and I will take every and give me a little tidbit of what you heard on the show in that email and you'll go into a drawing for a t-shirt that will occur on december 22nd for our christmas show um all kinds of cool things coming up we got some great guests coming up too i've got a great one today but i've got an uh an author and a bigfoot expert from england yeah where they call him the wild man uh got some uh, ghost hunters from australia joining us as well as somebody from the Isle of Wight in England. So we're going really international the next three weeks after today. I wonder if the Bigfoot over there in, uh, in England has a British accent. Ah, <laughs> you know, we'll, have, we'll, we'll be able to ask uh, when our I guest comes on. So. But let's get on to today's show. I'm very excited to talk about, with all the stuff the government's talking about, releasing uh, information on uh, studies and investigations they've done on UFOs or APUs, as they now call them. Today, I got Mr. Rick Warner. He's the Director of Investigations for the Extraterrestrial Research Center. And over the past several years, in addition to becoming a certified UFO field investigator with MUFON, he'll mention that in a few minutes, he's become a re an UFO researcher and is the ambassador to the Italian UFO Federation, known as FUI. I'm really anxious to learn more about that. He also happens to be the tech manager and director of client relations for Phantom Detectives, Detectives a paranormal investigation group. Uh, he's always had a lifelong interest in UFOs and paranormal since a child, including his own experience spotting a UFO as well. Uh, Mr. Warner is also an instructor and an expert in the martial arts and has appeared on numerous television radio shows. So, Rick, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, welcome. I'm proud to be here. Well, I'm really happy to have you. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about ghosts and things. And we've had to talk a little bit about cryptids on the show, but you're our first UFO guy. So I'm really anxious to hear. That's fantastic. Uh, uh, hear about your experiences and your, your training, especially with this latest report from the government uh, releasing some of their files and in phenomenon that's happened out, it, it, particularly in Florida is what I heard the other day. So take a second, tell us a little bit about yourselves, what your group does and how you how the extraterrestrial research center came to be okay so when i originally got started doing cases with uh investigating ufo cases um i started out with uh mufon and uh you know conducted a few cases there in the state of delaware because every state has their own state director and chief investigator and that sort of thing so mufon Yes, yes, with MUFON, yes. And that stands for Mutual UFO Network, in case anybody's wondering that. And uh, from there, you know, after I investigated different cases, you know, went through all my training I had to do, um, I decided that uh, originally I was going to go with a, a group of other people and uh, we were going to start our own organization. So uh, even though the training is excellent with MUFON, it is a volunteer organization. And I will say that uh, I've learned a lot, you know, working with, uh, you know, my colleagues that were in, you know, within MUFON. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there were some things that we kind of like weren't really happy with, uh, with the MUFON organization. So for that reason, you know, myself and others, we decided we were going to band together and form our own organization. So, you know, one person left because they had some things that, they wanted to go in a different direction and then another person left. So they kind of left us with two people. So I have uh, one guy that is the director of research. Uh, you know, we call him Dr. Liu. And then, um, and then of course, myself, I'm the executive director for ERC, which stands for Extra Re Extraterrestrial Research Center. Mm -hmm. I'm also director of investigations. And uh, yeah, that's how I got to be, you know, where I'm at now. And our organization, basically, um, I'm just going to put this out there. So we're not like trying to compete with MUFON in any way. That's not really the idea. I mean, MUFON's been around a very long time, mm -hmm. and they have probably over a thousand investigators. 
where our organization, it's more to provide, you know, information, educational material. Uh, you know, there's videos there that people can, um, you know, watch on the subject of ufology. And, uh, you know, there's some areas where there's some featured cases they could go in and listen to and uh, read about, you know, current research, you know, that type of thing. And the other thing is that we have a, there's a place that people can go to report a sighting or an event, which is on the ERC website. Mm -hmm. And once they go on to that report a sighting section, like as soon as they go on the website, there's a little section that says report a sighting. They can click on that or they can click on the tab in the menu. And then from there, they fill out a sighting report form. Mm -hmm. And there's a series of questions they have to ask. They hit the submit button and it goes to us. And we are we don't actually investigate every single case that comes to us, but rather, um, you know, we just select what cases that we feel would be the most compelling. And then those cases are the ones that we would choose to investigate. What's your criteria? What do you, do you have a, a, a criteria for reports that come into your organization to investigate? Well, okay. So our, our, our organization right now, it's fairly new. Uh, you know, we haven't been around very long, so probably for about a little bit less than a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, we haven't really had a, a lot of cases as of yet. You know, I know eventually that's going to build up where more cases are going to be coming in, that sort of thing. So um, you, actively, you actively go into the field and investigate these reports of sightings, correct? Uh, no, actually, um, because here's the thing. For, for our type of organization, like, let's, you know, going back to MUFON, if somebody fi files a case report, so what happens is, is depending on where they're at, if they're in Texas or Florida or California or wherever they may live, that case is going to go to the state director that's in that particular state, and then they're going to investigate there. A lot of the actual cases that come in are more low-level cases because uh, cases are classified to Category 1, Category 2, and Category 3. So like a category three case would be, it could be like, you know, somebody, you know, was looking in the back of their farm and they thought they saw what appeared to be like something land, land you know, some type of extraterrestrial craft, mm -hmm. or they saw uh, some type of extraterrestrial being that was, you know, on their property or walking around or something like that. Those are considered like level three cases. So um you know the cases most of the cases that come in are going to be a lower level case which would be like a flyby object you know someone saw something up in the sky and that'd be a, a level one yeah that would be like a category one well, okay. and, and a lot of those cases you know we can we can use a different software uh like um you know we can we can just look online and uh you know using software and see, you know, what type of planes or, or you know, single engine airplanes or passenger jets, uh, medical transport. And uh, so we use like, it's called, a, I think it's FlightAware 24, I believe it is. Um, anyway, I can't remember the exact name, but it's a special software where you can punch in a particular date of an event that occurred. Let's say someone saw something flying a certain direction, and you can look and see during that time what was flying in the sky. You know, somebody says they saw a single, it looked like, you know, maybe what, you know, was a small object, or, you know, they saw a certain reflection off of a plane they thought was unusual. And you could kind of see, you know, what was flying, you know, in the sky at that time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So uh, I, I guess that's the biggest difference between your organization and MUFON. MUFON's got chapters in every state, so they can send yes. people out wherever. Where you're, you yes, mostly, that's correct. You're mostly a repository for information. Would that be a, a good way to put it? Yes, yes, that's correct. And I should mention that a lot of cases that are investigated, they're actually done over the phone. Mm -hmm. And it all begins with uh, once they receive the case information, they contact the witness 
uh, by email. We always refer to them, uh, you know, by as the witness rather than using their name to, to make them anonymous. Sure. And even if they, you know, sometimes they'll um, choose to uh, not remain anonymous. Like they don't really care if their name's out there, but we always treat every case to keep the witness anonymous and refer to everything by case number. So I do the same thing. I have my own formula, like, you know, what do I, what, you know, case number I assign for each individual case. But uh, many, many cases can be, um, you know, conducted just by, uh, you know, it starts with an interview, you know, where the person that's investigating the case, you know, you, you have a, a list of questions prepared that you want to ask the witness. And you really, you know, as so basically as you're listening to them and they say, okay, well, you know, I definitely saw a flying saucer. I definitely saw a UFO, that kind of thing. You're not at this point, you're not really agreeing with them and saying, yes, that's definitely what you saw. It's more of listening to what they have to say to tell their story. But we don't just jump to conclusions and say, yeah, that was definitely a UFO. Because the truth of the matter is about 80% of what is seen out there of people that claim that they saw, you know, a UFO or, you know, something in the night sky that was, you know, in their backyard or whatever it may be. A lot of times those can be explained by uh, man-made objects uh, or it could be like, you know, some type of uh, uh, natural phenomenon or and it's um, like a lot of things in the paranormal. Yeah. Most of the time it could be explained. If you take the time to look at the entire picture, it can be explained naturally or by man-made uh, influence, that type of thing. I, yes, that's correct. Yeah. You're, you're, it's like lights flickering on and off. Let's say you're doing a, a paranormal investigation. And just because the lights are flickering on and off, you know, there could be some kind of a short in the, in the wiring in right. the house. Always look at so, the logical reason first. That's right. Like, that's exactly how we do things. And so, you know, I'll even have people ask me before a case is completed, they will try to say, well, you know, what do you really think this is? And then, you know, I always tell them, well, we can't really discuss it at this point until the case is completed and all the data is gathered. So what we're trying to do right now is collect data. Mm -hmm. and and you know just get information from different sources and then we arrive at conclusion you know what we think that the witness saw and uh you know every every case, even though, gets you a don't case. Go, even though you don't go out in the field you still will will uh investigate or at least inquire through your sources what what your client what your witness saw and either give them an opinion either way whether or not what they saw was man-made or something from the other yes side. that's correct i mean sometimes they you know what you what you tell the witness that you're you know what your conclusion is that you arrived at it might not always be what they were expecting yeah. but it's important to uh you know not always try to sway what a person believes but rather rely on good data and good investigation and rely on the facts, you know, what, Always rely you, what do you feel? You know, sometimes there's a little bit of a gray area or, you know, sometimes, you know, could it be a UFO or UAP now the unidentified aerial phenomenon uh, or, you know, is, is, is it something else? Sometimes it's not real clear and other times, you know, you might have like really good video footage and other times you might have video footage that's not so good. Now, so let's say like, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. You uh, how many you say 80 percent of the reports that come in are explained between your experience with ERC and MUFON or and any other organization that investigates this phenomenon? How many? Do you have a guess or an estimate how many reports per year come in from the public? Well, I can tell you as far as MUFON goes, I mean, they they keep track from state to state, like how many uh, re reports come in. 
Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like California is, there's a lot of sightings in California. Uh, also, you know, Florida is known to have a lot of Texas, uh, some of the bigger states out there, you know, New York even has a decent amount of cases. And, you know, it kind of, it kind of varies. Um, for some re reason or another, it seems to me like a lot of the cases are being reported. There's, you know, it seems like the, uh, you know, the, the sightings and things seem to be more predominant in, in one state than they might be in another state. Uh, you you also uh, in in going through your the stuff that we talked about before and the stuff that you sent me you also have some knowledge of uh, cases of alleged human abduction or implant uh, implantation devices um on, on victims can you tell us a little bit more about that well here's the thing um <clears throat> i mean me personally i have you know like right now currently i have a uh a, a general a case that I'm investigating, which is an abduction case. And ironically, um, that case actually became about, okay, I mentioned that, uh, you know, the paranormal. So, you know, I'm also part of a paranormal investigation team. I'm actually the lead investigator now. But uh, so we go out to this guy's apartment and he had, so while he's living at the apartment, you know, all these different weird things have happened to him. You know, he's seen like things on the wall, like some kind of images and things like that. And, and he felt things like touch him in the night. And he what he actually did was he set up video cameras throughout his apartment and started recording everything, you know, every day for for many months. Mm -hmm. And he actually sent the uh, the video footage to us to look at and uh he sent some he took some pictures from the video and he definitely had some very compelling uh images and i i was the the person that was chosen to to interview this guy because i pretty much you know i have really good interview skills and been doing a lot of interviewing through you know conducting my own investigations and I conducted an interview with this guy, and I thought this sounds like a really good case. Let's go ahead and take this case on and, and investigate this place. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, coming to find out, you know, by talking to him, you know, he mentioned that he felt that he uh, was abducted, you know, according to some of the things he had, he said that, you know, he. Uh, okay, so. Let me get this straight. He so he called you about with with evidence, but it wasn't about abduction. It was about paranormal activity. And he didn't, didn't be well, yeah. Well, what happened was, yeah, he, you know, it was primarily about, you know, to come over and do a, a paranormal investigation to see, you know, what kind of spirits were, you know, in in, in his apartment. Mm -hmm. And so we went in with our team. There was like four of us. And, you know, we did our EVP sessions and we came in with our K2 meters and, um, you know, used a, a ghost box and an AM FM sweep type of thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of different gadgets that pick up, uh, you know, different types of EMF fields and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And we actually picked up very compelling evidence at this guy's apartment, you know, so... We, oh, we by oh. a, a ghostly type, mm -hmm. uh, you know, entities that were in his apartment. Mm -hmm. So we figured that once we were asking questions and our psychic was there and who was also asking questions and tuning into things and using the dowsing rods to try to figure out how many spirits was an apartment, we actually came up with there was about um, seven or eight spirits, I believe, that they were there. And um, there, there were some angry spirits there, which was actually interesting because when I was running my uh, S ghost box, running it through a as an AM FM sweep, it has an SD card on it, so I could ask questions and do a re and make a you know recording, go back and look what was on the card. But I actually picked up um, some sounds of a lady using. Uh, 
some profanities that I won't say on the air, but uh, I was rather pretty disgusting, but you, she was definitely very angry. And of course, you're not going to be able to drop the F-bomb on a live radio station. No, so <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah. So anyhow, yeah. Um, and, and this guy, you know, sent some pictures of later on to me that um, he thought they were something extraterrestrial in nature. And one of them looked like um, kind of a smoky looking figure. And it had like a really kind of a big head and it kind of did kind of like a teardrop down to the chin. It kind of had that typical alien type head that a lot of people would, would come to know. But, uh, you know, I, it wasn't real clear on that, but he did send me uh, several photographs of different marks on his body from bruising. Uh, he had a lot of um, these little, little red dots on his body. He looked like little tiny punctures. And there was one that was, it looked like a triangle, like a group of little, little dots. Like these were more kind of purplish and it was like triangular shape. Um, and then there's some that have like, little red dots of you know um like like maybe three or four together so and so i i gotta ask you this question yeah because you you go in there to do a paranormal investigation and then suddenly and then he adds some photographs of showing figures of what you determine may be uh alien in nature correct Yes. Is there a correlation between the two? I mean, did you, did you find a bridge between those two specific phenomenons or were they connected? What did you, what conclusion did you end up drawing? Well, the case is still ongoing, so um, I haven't completed the case yet, but we're kind of at the point right now where actually I said I'm at the point right now where, you know, I'm uh, I, I just did a phone uh, interview with him. Mm -hmm. And I asked him several questions and um, a lot of the questions that I asked him were based on this famous lady who's now passed away, okay. who was a very famous um, uh, investigator with uh, abduction cases named uh, well, Dr. Barbara Bartholik. Bar Dr. Okay, Bartholik. We'll get back. Yes. I got to got to cut you short here. We got to take a quick break. So stay with us. Okay. I'll be with Mr. Rick Warner in just a couple minutes. Don't go away. Thank you. Would you like the opportunity to participate in a paranormal adventure? Indian River Hauntings is your connection for historical walking tours and events with a paranormal twist. Learn historical facts and haunted stories about Vero Beach, Sebastian, and Felsmere. Guests get a hands-on experience and use investigative equipment to see for themselves what can and cannot be explained. Book your ghost tour or contact Larry Lawson for a custom event at the website Indian River Hauntings. Go. The tradition of champions is continuing here at IRSC. Hi, I'm Osipher Owens, the freshman shooting guard on the 2021-22 Indian River State men's basketball team. My pioneer teammates and I have one goal, and that's to win the Southern Conference Championship for the third consecutive year. It is also our goal to give Coach Wilson a fifth consecutive 21 season. Come see us in the gym on the main campus. The tradition of champions continues. Go River. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. And we are back, folks. Thanks for hanging in there with us. I'm with my guest today, Mr. Rick Warner of the Extraterrestrial Research Center out of Delaware. Um, and we're really happy to have him with us today. And, and Rick, uh, we were talking about some interesting things there about this, this latest case. Uh, what, what was the name of that um, uh, researcher you just mentioned that was involved? Um, are you talking about someone else from my organization or... Well, no, you were, we were just talking about uh, somebody that w was involved in this case that you were just. Oh, OK. No, she wasn't actually involved with the case. So so what happened was, is I was doing some research looking for, um, 
you know, different types of photos of implanted devices, what's called alien uh, implanted devices. And those are devices that have found, um, there's been people that have undergone, you know, x-rays and they found like, you know, certain things within their body. Um, it could be like the grain of size of a grain of rice or it could be the size of a BB and they come in different shapes. Some are made out of metal. Some are made out of like a ceramic type material. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as I'm looking for that, you know, pictures of that kind of thing, I ended up going on YouTube and I saw the, this video that showed the, the x-ray of a hand. It was really, really pretty cool looking. And you could see that there was, an implanted device in the hand so it had a lady from italy it had her email address and i reached out to her that i was conducting this uh possible abduction case um and to see what you know if i could send her a copy of the investigation uh not the investigation report but rather the questionnaire that was filled out by the witness and sent to our organization and I wanted to send that to her. And she had told me based on the questions that were answered, that there was quite a few questions that have very compelling evidence that possibly that this person that I'm conducting the case with has really uh, experienced an, an, an abduction. So he's really, or he's an abductee, put it that way. Mm -hmm. And she sent me a list of 20, I think it was 28 or 29 questions that this famous um, lady who dealt with abduction cases. And she formulated a list of questions. And some of the questions in there, I didn't really care for. I thought maybe it, it might be something more like a therapist might ask a patient. Mm -hmm. And I thought some of the questions were a little too personal. So I didn't ask those questions and I actually put in some of my own questions and kind of created my own, you know, questionnaire. So I had about 29 questions I went through and, and asked this guy and he definitely seemed very honest and straightforward. And, uh, who was this researcher in Italy? Um, it's, well, actually she, she's like, a she works with a guy and I can't remember the name because, you know, it's really been a while back, but mm -hmm. the lady that uh, emailed me was, you know, she put some videos out there on YouTube and she's involved with some kind of doctor who conducts investigations on alien abductions. And that's how she had sent me a list of questions to ask gotcha. this guy. Gotcha. Now. You, you saw some some photographs of an x-ray of a hand has there uh, you know with a what grain of rice or, or something uh, which you was believed to be yeah. that, has there been any documented medical cases uh that are part of a medical file that you're aware of that have well, provided evidence of of this type of implantation well there's none that i can mention specifically that i really know of but from what i've researched on um there's many credible cases of people that have been to medical doctors mm -hmm. and had x-rays taken on their body and a lot of times you know i mean it could be anywhere there's implanted devices that have been found uh you know by the skull Mm -hmm. uh you know there's some of the arm there's some a lot of them places seem to be popular is right between the, the fleshy part where the thumb meets the index finger and a lot of times people don't know that they even have these devices but a lot of times people that have been um that claim to have been abducted mm -hmm. and many of these people that have gone undergone hypnosis there's many um, cases for many years of hypnotists gathering information about people that have a lot of similarities in cases of, you know, missing time and and different things that happen lots to them. Yeah, there's been been lots of reports 
regarding that, um, you know, over the decades. Uh, and that's what I think keeps the interest up uh, with everybody. But is there any is there any evidence that has been collected and is available for the average person to see that proves these facts that you're aware of? I mean, does MUFON have a, yeah. uh, uh, the ability to share this information or, or other organizations such as your own? Well, see, well, MUFON, what they do as far as um, myself personally, I didn't investigate any, abduction cases because they have a special team gotcha. that deals with abduction cases. So I didn't really deal with it. So the case I'm actually doing now is my first uh, alien abduction case. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're conducting a case with someone, you want to be as thorough as possible. And if that means bringing in um, other people into the case or, you know, sharing information with other colleagues, you know, in the field, anything that's going to help that investigation. You do the same thing in law enforcement. You'll, you'll find yeah. a little bit of extra. Yeah, how exactly. Involved, how did you get involved in all this, Rick? How did you become a, an investigator or interested in investigating reports of UFOs? Did you have a personal experience? Yes. Well, so when I was a kid and I remember uh, this was in California, a town called Garden Grove. And uh, this was right where if I remember the freeway was because they used the term freeway out there rather than the highway. But there was this uh, the 22 freeway, which go, runs east and west. And I remember you know, they're, they're kind of both talking in a conversation. I'm in the back seat and they weren't really paying attention because they were kind of looking at each other and the driver probably should have spent more time actually looking on the road. But um, so he was talking to my mom at the time and all of a sudden I see this what appears to be some type of a saucer that, that looked like it kind of flew at a fairly low altitude and it kind of hovered real quick. And then all of a sudden, within a blink of, uh, of an eye, it just took off at incredible speed and was gone. I'm like, whoa, what was that? So, you know, so at the time, uh, you know, when I was in school, you know, I mean, if you, if you talked about, uh, you know, you know, man going to the, you know, landing on the moon, going up to the moon and stuff like that, you know, you were looking kind of looked at as being crazy you know, back then. So uh, a lot of that type of, because I, I even remember at times people thought, you know, you would be crazy to think that man could ever, you know, travel to the moon. People were like laughed at and ridiculed. And, and look at now, I mean, how many trips there have been in space and out to the moon and that want. sort of thing. And I think so, that, yeah. can, that can go to any area of the paranormal. I mean, whether it's uh, UFOs, whether it's cryptids, ghosts uh which which i spend most of my time on yeah you know 15 20 years ago you just didn't mention it now it's in the forefront and that brings right. me up to my next question then for you um the u.s government is now releasing documents acknowledging unexplained vehicles in the air uh we we saw that the uh photographs from the Navy fighter pilots, both on the East and the West coast with the Tic Tacs, for example, and something just came out again yeah. today. Why do you think the government, in your opinion, why do you think the government is suddenly willing to share this with the public? And when obviously, you know, people have been seeing things for decades. Why now? Yeah. And here's the thing. <clears throat> not only have people been seeing things for decades, but it's not even just to the United States. It's all throughout the world. There's been sightings. And, you know, we're going off the sightings that we hear about. There's a lot of cases of people um, seeing something and they never even report it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes because they don't know that there's a place they can go to to to, to file a report. And other times they uh, just kind of brush it under the rug. You know, some people are actually afraid to talk to people at work about what they saw or, you know, in fear of maybe they'll think I'm crazy if I tell them and I'm, that could affect my job. I could lose my job. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, that happens. I mean, there's always going to be people that are uh, skeptical or, you know, they say, you know what, I don't, they don't want to believe in UFOs. Sometimes they're too scared to think of the idea of the possibility of extra, extraterrestrial beings from another planet. But if you if you think about it, I mean, even all the with all the astronomy and, and the scientists and things like that, the planets that we know about, they're in the textbooks and that kind of thing. I mean, there's like millions of planets out there that haven't even been discovered yet, including galaxies. So to kind of think that, you know, well, we're the only planet out there. You know, and that there's no there's no other type of uh, people out there that could possibly be from another planet. That it's just us. I mean, I think that there that's is. kind of crazy to yeah. just think that th that that's going to be the case. Well, and, and keeping an open mind. I mean, in in my business, I, every time I think I've seen everything, something else, something even stranger cropped up. And I'm talking about in the, in the world of uh, law enforcement, police work. And there's no question that. Uh, Military pilots, commercial pilots, professional pilots are going to be leery about discussing what they may have seen in the air, especially in by the bygone years, because it could affect their job. But now, now we've got these professional military pilots coming forward and saying, "This is what I've seen." And now it's it's yeah. one thing to be to to getting uh, your the air, cockpit of your aircraft and you're talking to your wingman or whatever about what you're seeing. But now it's getting out into the public and these same pilots are talking about it publicly. Um, do you think that's a reason why the government's coming forward? Or do you think the government is? Why now? Why has it suddenly become so important for the government to tell us what they really know? I don't think so much that they feel it's really important, but I mean, Here's the deal. I mean, before we started hearing stuff on the news about, you know, that they're going to have this government task force, uh, like, you know, with uh, uh, the DOD. Um, and, you know, before that, even, I mean, there were the government was conducting, uh, you know, their own investigations into looking into um you know, the UFO type activities. Blue book, yeah. This has been going on for a long time, but a lot of times we didn't really know about it. But the CIA, uh, you know, the FBI, uh, Department of Defense, they were conducting their own secret investigations where a lot of people didn't even know about. Even when Clinton was president and things, there, there was sure. a time when they had a special task force and they were doing it. And it wasn't brought to our attention. And Why I think... You know, I think because um, it's been going on for so long now, there's been so many sightings and the, acti the amount of sightings have increased more than ever. And I think it's kind of reached the point to where, you know, there's been things that have been leaked out. Um, you know, even the Nimitz case, you know, the, the video and all that, that wasn't even really meant to be seen, by the way, because True. That, that video clipping was kind of leaked out. So. Um, but there's a, there's been a lot of credible evidence by, uh, you know, passenger uh, airplane plane pilots and single engine airplane pilots and, you know, fighter jet pilots, that sort of thing. And also from law enforcement, you know, so there's some very credible people that have, you know, reported sightings. Oh, I... and, and it's kind of hard to ignore that kind of thing, you know. So do you think that we're getting more? activity now than we did say 10 15 years ago and that's oh yes much much more much more now and i think it's it's reached the point to where <clears throat> how long can you lie to you know your your own people how how long can the the government continue to try to hide things mm -hmm. and sweep it under the rug i think a lot of it is because they did they didn't want to incite panic in the public that's the that's the favorite reason for it yeah that's kind of what i think you know it you're you're always going to have people out there that they're, they're not going to believe anything unless they actually see it like somebody says well you know i know a god god exists well it, the person who's an atheist is going to say well okay if god exists well i haven't seen him you know where is he show sure. up to me sure. yeah exactly sure. so you're going to kind of have that kind of thing but 
like I was saying before that, you know, if you take 80 percent that of the cases that could be explained to man-made objects or natural phenomenon, you know, like a, a, a star can appear to be um, an extraterrestrial vehicle. Mm -hmm. or a planet you know for example like there was a guy that said uh you know well i you know i was looking outside and i see this uh really bright looking object that looked like a ufo and then as i'm kind of moving in the woods you know i could see it like moving around well that was actually him moving that made the object appear to be moving so let's let's say like you're driving through winding roads mm -hmm. and you're looking at the moon and you feel like the moon is moving, but it's actually not. Sure. It's you're moving, but it gives the appearance that it's moving. So that's just one of the many examples. But there's a lot of things out there, you know, from drones to, uh, you know, Chinese lanterns, uh, you know, weather phenomenon. And that's why we always have to look for the logical reason first. And that's right. It's, whether it's UFOs, ghosts, whatever, you always look for the logical, natural or man-made reason first. But if the if your feeling is... And I think there's many folks that would agree with you that there are more sightings now. Why do you think that is? Is there is there something causing more activity? Is there some reason it's being seen more? Based upon your experience. Well, you know, a lot of the experts feel that, you know, a lot of this activity is is heading to the possibility of um <clears throat> these aliens from di different planets actually uh making themselves more public to us you know maybe at some point that they're you know they'll actually um land as a matter of fact and i can't remember the name of the organization but uh there's a couple organizations right now that are trying to get um have an embassy built it's crazy as it sounds for a welcoming um you know it would be like a welcoming embassy type thing mm -hmm. and and, a, and a, almost like a small little city and i've kind of seen some picture of this type of thing that they did and it's on their website but i don't know what that is to give to you but and you could see it looks kind of like a futuristic little town and what they're trying to do, and this is just, and apparently there's thousands of people that are on board with this thing, including scientists and people in the government, you know, law enforcement, you know, different things to where um, they want to have it accepted as um, a, a welcome committee and a. Um, there, yeah, there's a lot of other groups out there to claim these cities actually exist, including some that are underground. And I wish we had more time to go into that. Cause that's yeah, a, yeah. a real wild story. Shall we say? Yeah, that is pretty <laughs> wild, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say that, you know, that, that really couldn't happen, but I mean, you know, if you have only 20% of the cases that have actually been filed as an actual, uh, ufo or uf uap mm -hmm. you know unidentified aerial phenomenon or unidentified flying object there's that still accounts for thousands and thousands of cases for many many years i would agree and obviously it's not all here in the u.s there's organizations uh, all over the world in fact you're the u.s ambassador to one of them in our last couple of minutes together i'd like to like you to kind of share that with us you're the U.S. ambassador to the Italian UFO Federation, uh, known as FUI. Tell us. Yes, that's correct. Well, what happened was because uh, I'm actually on LinkedIn, and I had a, a, a gentleman who uh, approached me about um, you know being part of the Italian UFO Federation, and um, you know as far as being representing the United States for them on their behalf. And so, you know, I looked at their website to see what they were doing and that kind of thing. And the gentleman that I actually had to communicate with, he doesn't speak English and I don't speak Italian. So okay. we actually had to use um, a Google translator. So I would just type in what I wanted to ask questions about directly to him. And I had to convert my english into italian i would send it to him and he would convert his italian and send it to english and you know 
to English for me. But apparently they're the largest UFO investigative agency in all of Italy. Mm -hmm. And I should mention that uh, MUFON only maybe gets one case, um, uh, maybe a, like a month that comes out of Italy because they don't really most they don't really report to move on so much. They have their own little, right. you know, agencies that they deal with internally. Yeah, a lot, a lot of different countries do. Well, we're we're getting a little bit short on time. Uh, so what I'd like to do is have you mention to the folks how they can reach out and get a hold of you, either to file a report or ask more questions about your organization. So if you could share that with us, I'd appreciate it. Yes. Okay. So the best way to reach um, my organization, which is called ERC, Extraterrestrial Research Center, you could visit our website at www.erc2.com. I'm sorry, ERC number two explore.com so erc2 number two explore.com and if you go to that domain name it'll take us it'll take you to our home page and from there uh you know you can see a lot of different sections about research and education there's even a, a ufo glossary that you could learn from as well as um reading material and that kind of thing okay. and you could also file a sighting report so if you see something that you want to report, uh, feel free to visit our website and uh, go ahead and hit that report a sighting button that's right there on the homepage. Well, Rick, I really appreciate you spending time with us today. We're about out of time here, but thank you so much for sharing uh, information about ERC and good luck with your investigations. Uh, thank you. Folks, I appreciate you joining us today. Join us for the next couple of weeks. we got some really exciting shows coming up. Uh, Bigfoot, some folk ghost hunters out of uh, Australia and England. So we're really looking for that. So join us next week. We're here every Wednesday from 11 a.m. till noon. And uh, please take care. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. Please take Happy care. Happy Thanksgiving. Please. <laughs> thank you, Rick. Please take care. <laughs> thank Be you. Safe. Take care of your family. And until next week, we'll see you on the other side. Happy Thanksgiving, folks. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. And the time right now is 12 o'clock noon.